Hi guys, here we are again, another Solomon's Tales. They keep going. So, Solomon just arrived in Krabby. So he's been away a few days now on this trip. And, uh, oh nang. Comes down the main drag towards the beach and gets the taxi just to drop him off. Just up from McDonald's. He heads to the hotel he stayed before. But, full. No good. But the guy there pointed him, couple of doors up, it's another hotel similar, similar layout, design, so he wanders up and in, sure enough, 800 baht a night, says okay, goes on in, and there's a pool at the back again, that's good, they were all got little pools, but this place had some really nice rooms by the pool, lucky he got one of those, and opposite in the corner is a bar area, a bit of a cafe, there's a couple of girls sat there, anyway, goes in the room, chucks his stuff in and uh, pokes his head out the door, looks at these cafe and these girls and the girls sort of beckon him over and he goes, mm, okay. He goes over to this cafe area, the two girls sat down, no other one, no one else around, Paul looks inviting, Yeah, hey, these girls, come sit down, sit down and he, okay. One girl looks a bit like a bar girl, the way she's dressed but she had gold necklace, gold uh, bracelet, rings, so a bit of money. So, hmm, she looks a bit uh, at market to be working here. The other girl looked more like a cleaner, hired help, <clears throat> and they were eating. Anyway, they said, I'll tuck in to the food, and he's okay, <laughs> grab some chicken or whatever. And the girl says, You want a drink from the bar? Yeah, okay, Chang, it's full of fridge, full of Chang. Okay, give me a Chang. He starts chatting to these girls, and uh, the, uh, the one with the gold and stuff speaks quite good English. Anyway, a couple of minutes in, eating and drinking, a uh, tall thin guy with glasses, sort of national, um, sort of tinted sunglasses, glasses, you know, national health type or whatever they are, tall and thin, comes wandering around, he's got a nice shirt on and shorts. Turns out he's from um, Denmark and he speaks good English and it's his hotel and he introduces himself, can't remember his name but says hi, put his hand around this girl's shoulder, the one with the gold, ah, there it is, there's the connection, that's his missus and then just chats to her, says about it. he's going to have to do a job or something and says goodbye and walks off, oh, nice guy. So that's it then. Boss's missus and the cleaner hired help who maybe works the bar. Anyway, Solomon thinks I'm going to have a chill, I might have a swim. So he finishes that beer and says to the girl how much. She said, well, just put it on the bill, pay at the end. Okay. Back to the room, throws his swimming shorts on, dives in the pool, has a swim. Gets out after a bit and lies on one of the sun chairs and... Uh, just lies there contemplating life. What's happening? He's four months in now to his trip, his one year trip. He wants to work in Asia. Before he went over this trip, um, a friend had told him that you can get jobs in Thailand as teachers. And this is 15 years ago, remember. Um, and this friend had told him, go online and there's a course, a couple of hundred pounds. And Solomon did this before he came over. It was a six week course, a couple of hundred pounds, and he got a certificate at the end. It was a TEFL, a teacher of English foreign language, foreign language, as foreign language, TEFL or whatever it's called. So he got that with the thought that he could teach in Asia if needed, but he doesn't fancy it. But he's qualified. Um, and he's, you know, that's something he could fall back on. But he's, he's lay there thinking, you know, why he didn't stay in Hat Yai because of that incident. Lovely place, he's going to have to go back one day and explore it more. But when he got to the Malaysian border, why didn't he go off into Malaysia and have a wander around? He'd heard it's quite expensive. He's starting to dip into his savings now. You know, the money he keeps winning from these little contests doesn't go far. Um, and he's starting to think four months in, I've got to seriously think about work. I really fancy working in 
some sort of bar, but don't know how I could get one of those jobs. And he's he's only a couple of days away, and he's missing Patea, he's missing Ning, Frozen. It's like a safety net there. If he's got any problems, the girls would help him out. He feels it's like like a second home now. And he's thinking, I miss it already. Only been away a few days. I actually miss the place, even though it's crazy busy and it's just something is drawing him back there. He's thinking, don't think I'm going to stay here. Or maybe you know the one night. Really fancy going back and start the search properly. See if there's any work. Mm -hmm. He sort of made his mind up, but he's not sure. Anyway, afternoon goes by. Dives in his room, has a shower and changes. Thinks I'm gonna get some evening food. I'll just have a wander down the front round the shops and things. I'm not gonna do the bars and the girls and just gonna relax and chill. So off he goes. Down the road to the beach, round the corner. There's only one road really in Onang. And he wanders along, recognises a few of the places and the shops and bars. And he just keeps walking past the shops and just keeps going. And he's like, keeps going. <laughs> there's a bit of a marina on the beach side and then the road curves around and goes off. And he remembers there's, he remembers there's a few bars further on. Quite a long walk. Past some hotels or resorts and then there's a bit of a market and a few bars. Some restaurants up there. So he just keeps walking and walking and walking at a fair distance, maybe a kilometer along the road. Gets to that area, spots the restaurants over by the beach, and it's one bigger restaurant, so it's all in the wood effect and built out of sort of trees and things. It's just like a cabin y type restaurant. He thinks, I'm going to spoil myself and go and have some food there. So he goes across, in, and uh, They've got steaks and all sorts in there, ribs, the lot. And he pushes the boat out, gets himself a steak. Um, and a really nice steak as well, very nice. Not like him, but yeah, steak. Cost him about 300 baht, which is a lot for an evening meal in Thailand. So he finishes his steak, and he's just looking over the water, it's beautiful. Looks across the road and he can see a few bars and he thinks, I'm going to have a few beers. It's quiet, there's not many people about. Anyway, pays his bill, crosses the road. And he picks a bar right next to the road. There's only a girl behind the bar. One of the girls sat on the other side of the bar. Um, no customers, so they're happy to see him. And he sits there, has a few hours, drinking, talking to the two girls. A few customers come along at the road and a few backpackers in the area um, but not many people around at all quite quiet anyway a couple of hours later he thinks that's it I'm gonna go and crash and tomorrow I think I'm gonna head back to Patea so he walks back a good mile one and a half kilometers back to the hotel all the way along the front and up the road past McDonald's up the hill as he's going up the hill he sees over the right that um, little alleyway where all the bars are and he can all the music's going there's quite a few customers down there he noticed and he thinks no <laughs> I'm not he's not doing it he's had enough trouble with girls the last few days makes his way back hotel fair enough early night crashes Next day comes, I think it's right, I'm going to go back. Goes to the reception, check out. He says to the girls uh, on the reception, how do I get to Krabby Airport? What's the best? They say, taxi, it's about 350 baht. Um, just down the road, loads of taxis. Okay, cool. And it's, it's early, it's about you know nine o'clock. I think I'll grab some food first and then I'll head off to the airport see if I can get a flight up to Bangkok. So wanders down, opposite McDonald's on the other side of the road, a couple of little cafes, dives in there and gets some breakfast. 
Again, not many people walking around, really quiet. Usually there's loads of backpackers, but there's not many, there doesn't seem many. He was thinking about he'd like to go and do the islands and have a wander around the islands, but he's got this itch to go back. He's still got over a week left in his room he's paid for. Uh, and Ning's there. He thinks, uh, hmm, we'll do that. So he finishes breakfast, cross the road back on the McDonald's side, and there's three taxis lined up. Goes up to the first guy. How much? Crabby Airport. Guy says 400 baht, and he's like, mm hmm. And the guy's like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay, he's being charged maybe a touch more, but never mind, 400 baht. So, okay, get me up to the airport. Jumps in the cab, up to the airport, it's not far away. Gets to the airport, it's a smallish airport. Looks on the board, there's a couple of flights, an Air Asia and another flight. I think it's knock air or something. Over the next few hours, there's a few flights. So, goes to the desk. Air Asia looks at the prices. Goes to that knock air and looks at the prices. Air Asia is cheaper, but it's about fourteen hundred baht one way, which is a lot. If you book in advance, you get it for about six seven hundred baht back then. But you walk in, you got to pay more. Anyway, gets a ticket one way to Bangkok and uh, it's Don Juan Airport it's going to. In he goes, checks in, goes through security. He's got an hour, so grabs a coffee. That's it, he's done his visa run. So he's got another 30 days, get an extension in Patea. So that's the next two months taken care of, all sorted. No drama. So, he flies up Bangkok, Comes out of the airport. Hmm. Should he have a night in Bangkok? <laughs> so many people have that uh, have that thought. But it gets expensive. You have a night in Bangkok. Can be expensive. And he's thinking about it. And he's thinking about it. Now, for the price of a taxi, 800 baht. Down to Patea, or a room at a hotel is going to be maybe a thousand baht. Then he's going to get drunk and into trouble and it, nah, he thinks, nope, taxi, jumps in the taxi, Patea, hour and a half, two hours, gets down to Patea, beach road, right at the end of Soy 4, he drops him off, pays the guy, for his rucksack, and he's like, this feels like home, it really does, and he thinks, right, I wonder if Ning's in the room or after ring her to get the key or she's left it. So any walks up, goes into the bar area. No Sue there, but the girl behind the desk there. She's like, key? She's got oh, you've come back. She's got uh no key. Maybe Ning. Okay. So up up he goes upstairs, along the corridor, to the door. Tries the door, it's locked. Knocks on the door. You can hear Ian Ning or somebody inside, probably full of girls. He knocks on the door. Sure enough, door opens. Red hair. Remember that girl? He's like, hi. And walks in. <laughs> and there's, uh, what's he facing? Who's in there? Who do you think? Oh dear. Um, yes, red hair's there. Yes, M, that girl's there. Yes, Ning's there. Hi, Ning. And that go go girl's there. All four of them are in the room. And Ning's like, ah, Solomon. Jumps up, comes across, gives him a big hug. You're back early. So, yeah, I just do visa. Oh. We, we we finish room and we stay here for two weeks. <laughs> Not have room. And he's like, mm, yes. <laughs> but we finish room. We 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 have to stay here now for another another week. It's about another eight days. And he's like, oh god. Yeah, it's his own fault for coming back early because he had said to them, 
you can have the room. He's like, oh well, five in a bed. <laughs> what? That would be every guy's dream. And he's like, whatever. <laughs> Throws his back in the corner. And he's like, nah, no problem. Just we'll 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 manage. <laughs> and he's like, okay, cool. And she gets back into bed. And this is what well, this is like mid afternoon, and they're sleeping again. What are they like? Always sleeping or always eating? And he's like, oh dear, he thinks. Anyway, I'm gonna get some food, he says. I'm gonna, uh, I'm hungry. I want a proper, proper bit of food. Got the bike key? Oh, yeah, yeah, over there, by the TV. He grabs a bike key. And the fact he mentioned food, all of their ears like perked up like, where you go food? No idea. Maybe by Mike's shop in Mal, there's all them little Thai places there. You know. And they're like, mmm, food, mmm. It's, it's just like a, like an animal, you know, it's like food. And they're all sort of, you know, it's mid afternoon, they've got a few hours before the girl or the go go is going to go off to work. And he mentioned food, and they know he's got a pocket full of money. Yeah, of course. Hey, we come with you. We come with you. He's like, no, no, no. Cost. He said, no, it cost me money. Look, I go on my own. Um, but yeah, that's how it is. He's. I'm not paying for this. I'm not. I'll be broke if I keep paying. You've got a room free. That's it. Now I've got to share a room with four women. That's crazy. Dream. What the dream? He says, no, no, I'm going. And he's just out the door he goes. Grabs his bike, down to Mike's shopping mall, and then sneaks up the uh, lane at the side there. And there's all these lovely dishes, these, these, all these little cafes and open air food places. They do great food. You have so much choice. So he dives there, gets food. He's back in Patea. <laughs> He's got the dream with the girls. He's got the bike, the room, all sorted. What more could a man want? But he's now starting to think about job. And he's thinking, how can I find a job? Is there such a thing as a bar job? You know, a manager's job. Is there such things? And he remembers that guy, the Belgium guy, was it? Was he Belgium or German? That beat him at pool so many times. And said to him come up and play pool and he had his own bar and he's thinking to himself I wonder because he's he mentioned something about he's got a bar and with somebody else I wonder if he needs a manager and he's starting to start to think job manager anyway he finishes his food it's what about 4 4 30 in the afternoon he thinks, I'm gonna go up and see that guy Worst scenario, I'll have a drink and a play, play pool with him. So he jumps on the bike, whips around the one-way system, up second road to Dolphin Roundabout, then straight over into the Naklua Road, which is sort of heading back up to the main road. Um, and he remembers the guy said it was on his right-hand side, not far up. So he goes up a bit, there's quite a few bars there, does a U-turn and then crawls down. Guy said it was near the roundabout, so he just parks his bike about 200 metres from the roundabout, just chucks it there, and uh, jumps off the bike and just starts walking down towards the roundabout, looking in the bars, which one's got the best pool table? That'll give us a clue, that'll be the clue. Sure enough, two or three bars down, spots a nice table, and there's a couple of guys playing, and he just stands and looks, and one guy's bent down taking a shot, and he gets up. And it, it's him. I think, ah ha ha, found the bar. In he goes. Walks across to the guys and the guy turns around and like, ah. Shake hands as if they hadn't seen each other for ages. And yeah, the guy welcomed him in. Solomon orders a beer. And sort of sits on the bar stool next to watching the guys play pool. 
the other guy, this Belgian guy or German, whatever's playing, seems quite good as well. I haven't seen him before. Yeah, they finished the game and the guy's like, want to play? It's like, yeah, why not? So he jumps in and takes this other guy's place and they start knocking the balls around, start chatting. Sure enough, Solomon brings up the question. I fancy doing a job, a bar manager job. How would I get one? You've got your own bar. What's the score? And he's like, well, you, you can't really. He said, you know, you're going to need a work permit. Or if you don't get a work permit, you just got to be quiet. You can't go behind the bar. You know, you're just really managing customers um, and trying to bring customers in. He said, I can't help you. He said, I share this business with a friend. And we take it in turns three months to run the bar. Um, and he says to him, I think the guy down at the Sharky's pool hall, um, he's something to do with the go-go bar. And he mentioned something about a job, a manager's leaving. He said, why don't you try him? There's a lead, information. So, they carry on playing pool. Have a good, good old game. A few more beers. They're getting on really well. But this makes it awkward for competitions because they get, if they get too pally, it'll be hard on the competitions. Anyway, so there we go. We've run over quite a few minutes, but I'm not doing 30 minute videos, guys. <laughs> so next time, Solomon's now on the hunt. He's back in Patea. He's on the hunt for a job. How will he get on? Will he really have to go back to his room that night and share it with four girls? Oh, that'd be a hard life. Imagine being stuck in that. It's only a double bed with four. Oh, such a hard life. Huh. See you on the next one. Bye.